Welcome everybody to our new session of questions and answer Q&A. Uh, this is our second Q&A session. We had the first one on 8th of November and uh, we had also Sergio with us, Professor Sergio, the coordinator, and we had Julia from Italy. Today we're having Riza from Indonesia, he's also a student representative, and also from the intake three. Last time we had Supriya and uh, Nikitsha. Today, today we're having with us Sharona from Copenhagen. Well, she's connected from Copenhagen. Yeah, she's connected from Copenhagen. And, uh, yeah. Oinka. Oinka yeah. from Brussels. Connected from Hi. Brussels. Connected from Brussels. How are you guys? Do you hear us very well? How are you? Sorry? Are you hearing us good? Can you hear us? Oh, yes, I can. Okay, okay. perfect. Good. Um, so, uh, of course, students have a lot of questions regarding this lead, and we, in this session, we're trying to give as, as much as possible an overview about the DC lead experience from a professor experience and administrator experience and from also students' experience. Uh, we're going to try to answer some questions from chat and from the form that probably a lot of students has asked through. And also we're going to chat regarding DC lead. Everyone would uh, share his point of view. Uh, Professor, you're the coordinator of uh, DC Lead. Like, uh, can you make us a brief introduction about uh, DC Lead? And uh, yeah, I mean, this is gonna be a, a very brief. Uh, if I may, uh, um, sort of uh, uh, refocus uh, the conversation here. Of course, we are we're gonna talk about the students' experience mainly, uh, the professor experience. Are we not interested? <laughs> For anyone, yeah. Yeah. Um, my role, of course, is to answer questions regarding the program and qualifications, etc. But um, that said, uh, probably I haven't read the questions yet. This is uh, after the last job today. Um, but we are also not going to answer any question that are uh, specific to any individuals uh, or situations required regarding. Uh, personal uh, situations regarding the requirements or or our, uh, any uh, questions that are too specific to a, a particular person. Uh, and we're going to use this session particularly to bring uh, the viewpoint of the students and their experience. And so I answer those questions that are not answered on the website. So rather than, uh, you know, um, requirements for the English proficiency, this is well explained on the website, you know, things about uh, how you live in Copenhagen, in Brussels, uh, what are your expectations regarding uh, work, employment after the program, or, uh, you know, your experience with studying uh, in the program, with applying for the program, et cetera, et cetera. So um, if you are uh, watching this, you probably have been uh, on our website, so you know that digital communication leadership is a program. Uh, it's partly financed uh, by the European Union. Uh, so we receive a budget for uh, scholarships and we uh, provide about uh, 15 scholarships per year. Uh, but also we have uh, some money for organizing events and common activities. Uh, so normally, uh, uh, and, and this is a question that's probably going to be uh, in the chat or in the forum, is that how many scholarships we do, uh, we provide every year, and this is about 15. 15 scholarships, um, and out of a cohort that will uh, include maximum 30 students from next year. Uh, also, um, in the previous years, we, we received uh, a bit over 300 applications, uh, and we uh, accepted uh, in the end 21 students, a few more that then had um, to uh, uh, give up their uh, place at the last minute for personal reasons. So we have 33 students, I think. And so that gives you a sense of the uh, ratio of acceptance uh, for participations in the program. As you know, this lead has uh, now three tracks. The so one is Techman. Uh, technology and management. Uh, this is your 
uh, Reza Zan Sharona, connected from Copenhagen. We have Pauline, Policy and Innovation. Is that yours? Oh, oh, yours that yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, for me, they're all the same. Yeah. <laughs> they are together in the first semester. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it, it's only relevant when I have to make a decision. But we have Lincoln from, from Brussels, uh, connected up uh, the Pauline track. Uh, and from next year, and that's why we have no students at the moment or uh, in any intakes or alumni, uh, we're going to start offering a new track uh, in cooperation with the university in the Netherlands, in Wageningen, um, which is the ICT for the uh, track, uh, which is also uh, a much uh, more comprehensive ty typology of degrees that are accepted for participation. And so, uh, um, the, uh, one last thing about this lead, uh, it's a, a master program that has mobility. Mobility, so it starts in Salzburg for the first semester for, for four months. Actually, this is where uh, we are right now. And then Peckman uh, is, uh, includes one year in Copenhagen, uh, Pauline one year in Brussels, ICT for the one year in Wageningen, and the fourth year, uh, fourth semester, sorry. Um, <laughs> There are different typologies the students can choose to stay where they are or come back to Salzburg. And in this period, they can also include a research stage in one of the party universities. Now we, we have UCLA uh, in Los Angeles, course QT in Brisbane. Uh, we have Ghana Technology University College uh, in Accra. Um, yeah, Queens of the Security in Brisbane. And then we have FRB, I don't know if it's in Portuguese, it's in Bahia in Brazil. Uh, I think that's enough for the presentation. Yeah. I, I, I suppose everybody, everybody is on this video, uh, I mean, this yeah. chat, know enough. Uh, well, of course, actually, are, we'll be finding this um, uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, they will actually have access to other videos that do a much better job than I can do right now in explaining all the things. As regarding the program and the tracks, so uh, thank you. I guess let's jump on the question forms and start picking up some questions from the form. Okay. Uh, there is uh, that interesting question that I really like. Uh, like when will the semester's uh, course description be available? I can uh, reframe this question. Are you going to provide a description about the content of the courses? Yeah, I'm sure those questions are now from the last week as well. Maybe we skip those questions. Uh, because actually, uh, this is what we have updated. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, basically, uh, basically uh, most of the courses now have been uh, updated. So when we are where we have information, we actually included it. And, and so uh, uh, there have been a, a big update of courses uh, this this week. Uh, so there are only a few courses that are missing into the description. It's not uh, it's not available uh, to a large extent. Most of the courses. Uh, there are links to the description of the courses right now. Oh, so you can check the websites. Yeah. Yeah. And then connect it to, to know about that. Uh, I also want to tell the guys who are connected to the session. You can also ask from the questions on the chat. So we can um, answer your questions from the chat as well. It's not just from the form you were provided before. Uh, one 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 question as well is a very long one. It was uh, telling me, actually it's a technical one regarding the language of the documents uh, for the for the application. It's all mentioned it should be either English or German. Agnes, it's clearly mentioned that yeah. it should be translated. No, but this is, uh, um, this is uh, um, only in respect to the documents that are additional to the application. Uh, and so we accept English or German or other anything that's to be understood by um, the selection committee and so it has to be translated uh, in English. 
you know, why don't you, why don't you gotta be a good host and ask questions to our guests? Yeah, of course. Actually, we can start. Uh, I have a, a brief, a brief, uh, a brief uh, explanation about your experience uh, in Copenhagen, Chara. Hey, I Hello. muted myself. So yeah, my name is Sharona. I am from the Netherlands. So if you guys have questions for studying in Wageningen, I of course don't know the program specifically, but I can maybe help with uh, questions related to the Netherlands. But right now I'm in the third semester, so I'm studying in Copenhagen. Um, yeah, I, I like it a lot. Um, honestly, I like it a, a bit more than the time in uh, Salzburg, just because it's a bit more technical and a bit more um, in my field of interest. Uh, of course, I also like the semester in Salzburg just because you get to know everyone and it makes it just adds up to the whole uh, DC lead experience. Um, well, uh, I don't know what you guys want to know. Um, I guess that was a good enough introduction for now, but if you guys have more questions, then let me know. Uh, Rizzo, would you like to add, to add something? Yeah. Um, maybe I think I can share about the uh, Brussels first, and I'll, I'll add something in about Salzburg. Yeah. Oh, Hi, guys. Yeah. As you already know, my name is Oiko. And um, prior to this, I shared something on my blog, which has been of help to incoming students. I had a few people, you know, send me DMs to talk about, um, to ask questions concerning DCD. So, yeah, I'm actually open to not just um, regular, I mean, every other person I wish to uh, find out about DCD, but particularly third world countries, because I'm aware of the extra, um, the extra issues and, you know, bureaucratic problems that we have when it comes to applying and um, getting um, forms and everything, you know, just, because of the process that we have to go through for DC lead. So yeah, straight to, the, um, to answer the question, Brussels is actually a beautiful place, even if I miss Salzburg. On one hand, I miss Salzburg, on the other hand, I do not, because Brussels is a bigger city, there are better opportunities here. In case you want to come, and you get here and you want to work, there's so much you can actually do. So we, if you have to, um, if you have to go the extra mile in the sense that, um, if you know the main thing is i must actually put this out is if you can balance it you need to know that it's very very important balancing work with school because while dc lead is quite interesting you know the old erasmus lifestyle it is actually really really tasking life in brussels is different from life in salzburg we were baby over there but it's not the same here it's really big. it's not the same but it's an interesting experience all the same Okay, thank you for this uh, valuable contribution. Uh, actually, I would like to ask our friend Chi if you can close the camera, please, because we're having a problem for uh, preventing uh, the camera. So please, thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, yeah. okay uh, so we're taking uh, also a question from the phone. Uh, I think uh, there's an interesting question uh, um, about the summer school. Oh, I would okay. like to uh, uh, this is to have your experience uh, of the summer school and um, what do you think it was contribute to your uh, I to your understanding of of the program or uh, you know in general what was your experience uh, the summer school uh, maybe I'll introduce it. it it takes place in the first or second week. From, from SG is going to be on the second week of the participation uh, in the, the program, and it, it happens um, in a place in, near Salzburg, about an hour from Salzburg, near the lake. Uh, and so we have this facility where we all uh, uh, sleep in the same compound. Uh, of course, uh, our students have mostly double rooms, so they couple up with a uh, with a with a mate. Uh, and then we have lunches and dinners together, and um, um, mostly um, academic input and, and meetings uh, for four days. Um, so I know this is uh, uh, quite a comprehensive experience. Mm. Uh, maybe Reza, you have okay. uh, thought yet? You're very fresh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
So uh, from my experience this summer school, um, as Sergio said, it was on the second week of starting the program. It was actually quite a surprise, a pleasant surprise, because when we gathered at this place, it was like, for me, it was a bit magical because we went to this uh, countryside, Austrian uh, village, in, and then we get around and the weather was nice and we stayed for maybe almost five days a week or at most. And what's, what strikes me the most was that the input sessions were actually they were actually thought provoking because I came here with a mostly technical background, but then a lot of the uh, a lot of the input sessions they provided uh, a lot of these new perspectives, especially from the communication studies and from the from, there was even uh, an input session about art as knowledge, which completely changed my perspective. So from the input sessions itself, it was pretty great, and we also get to uh, see our seniors, the insect three students. Uh, like Sharona and Oinka present their master's thesis proposal, which was also very nice because it gave us an idea of what we could do in DC Lead. So, and besides from that, like basically hanging out with Abdal and Sergio, the professors and the students alike, it was it was good. We had a good time till like in the evenings, and yeah, it was nice. I really enjoyed the. I mean, as you can see, I'm smiling, so yeah. I'm really enjoying the summer school. Yeah, of course, it was really a good start for the program. Yeah, and uh, we wish that all the silly was the summer school. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's yeah. not just one week or a bit less. Uh, it was a really spectacular uh, experience for me. Yeah, yeah, I think together with all of the international students, yeah. like being the only one who representing your country. Right? Yeah, Maybe Chef Darwin as well. But for most the, yeah. Or, yeah, most of the other students and even the professors like uh, uh, having been from different countries because yeah, we true. had hosts from uh, you know, other universities, yeah, industrial true. partners, yeah. we had input uh, di different imp kind of input. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. And differently over the city itself, the, the village. The village yeah. That was a different thing. Yeah. Right? It was it was amazing. I, I, yeah. I, I, I feel like I was uh, living in the a Windows uh, XP for background <laughs> background picture. It was an amazing and uh, that was totally a different uh, experience for me. Uh, and actually this adds a great value to the to, to the program, right? Because uh, as uh, Sergio said, it's the start from where students are oriented for the, the, the general program, the three years. Yeah. So there where you get the first the motivation, where you get to know your partners, your students, your mates, also your professor, also the partners, academic and industrial partners. And then you, you get the, the initial guidelines about uh, what are you going to take in this degree, what are you going to be, what is your interest in that, how, how do you Start, uh, do the work. For example, the the collaborative orientation of work started from the summer school yeah, where we had a lot of group sessions, group, group sessions, yeah. group work, everything we had to do together. We didn't do anything uh, on ourselves almost. Yeah, we didn't almost. Yeah, and actually, this is also applied on the program itself. Yeah. Now, with the least lead in the normal course, yeah. almost every project, every presentation, we are doing it as a group, not as individual, which is. I guess this is like a, a new educational strategy that uh, help people uh, that, that helps students actually to work more in teams yeah. and have more know how to uh, benefit from others' experience and from other resources. Um, would you like to add anything about the summer school, uh, uh, Sharona? Okay. Uh, sorry, Sharona or yeah. um, okay. Sharona. Very first almost inside gathering moment for me. Like it was a touchstone month. Like it was like I liked the word magical. I mean, it felt like it was so nice. I, I mean, because we barely, you know, we had barely resumed and we didn't know what to expect. So the idea, I mean, I really love summer school and how it breaks you in into the processes and the challenges you you might likely encounter as a GCE student and how you're prepared for the rigorous work, you know, from one session to the other, from one you could to the other. And yeah, actually, it actually helped in fostering relationships with my classmates. Um, so yeah, um, summer school is really, is a really good initiative. 
Thank you. Um, I, I'm, I'm taking over you as a host. Um, I'm moving on to ask a, a, a question to Sharona. There's a question being asked in the chat uh, from Maria. Um, she says she's interested in the internship and in Techman uh, and a company called Critera. I know that um, you're, you're not going to do an internship, I know. Uh, 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 you're going to UCLA, if I'm correct. Um, uh, but I know there are, uh, and you're probably aware of um, a lot of um, students in Copenhagen working as well at the same time or uh, being involved in projects that are part of your program that also are um, combined with um, support from uh, companies, maybe also including Fitera. Can you uh, yes, talk a little bit about this? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know Cryptera myself, honestly, but I definitely think it's a great addition to your DC Lead experience to do an internship. Uh, I'm personally working myself next to my studies as well, and I just think you learn so much from uh, actually applying what you learn also to the, to the business life and to see like how, how is stuff going on there. And I think that's actually one of the biggest advantages in Copenhagen. It's very easy to do, um, to have a job as like, for example, a student assistant. Uh, mm -hmm. So you're actually doing the work that you're interested in. So you can have like a, a challenging job instead of maybe working as a waitress. So they're very open towards that in Denmark. The lifestyle is also uh, pretty chill. They're very open uh, in the sense that if you say that you're not gonna work for a month because you're gonna focus on your studies, they will completely accept that. So again, I don't know Cryptera, but I think it's really a nice addition to doing internship. And I think you can learn a lot from it. And really Danish uh, work culture is so amazing. And it's such a good experience to get to know that better. I think. Yeah, maybe uh, I add in, in, in the when this internship is part of the fourth semester. So uh, as I said, other, and as Sharona said, as other people also uh, uh, working during other semester but in the fourth semester this is also in combination of the thesis so normally it's part-time work and it's connected uh, to the topic of also of the thesis uh, as well and then as well uh, as Sharona said it's it's, uh, it's a good working experience something that it's uh, it's a plus on the curriculum also as a you know as a learning experience as well um, yeah. You should ask the next question. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, so, no, no, yeah, I would say to Oinka. Yeah. <laughs> this is your question. Oh, you can yeah. any uh, contribution to the work in Brussels. No. Uh, you would like to add? No, I, I uh, there's another question from the chat. Okay, you yeah, I see. <laughs> uh, what skills and strengths? Should you possess so keep in mind for pursuing Pauline? Yeah. So first, uh, one thing, is, and this is not just even restricted to the Pauline track, you need to possess writing skills. Very important. You, I mean, from Salzburg down to this point, you need to write papers and, you know, be, be critical in your writing, not just writing like you're writing a story. Be critical. Um, angle is very important so now i would suggest that if you do not have an idea of what it takes to be critical in your writing um just go online and you know just take a look at papers to just prepare your mind because it pays to be prepared from the start and i mean i wish someone told me this because in the in the case to be prepared for dc lead i never ever looked at that until the time i had to do my first assignment to write my first paper so yeah it would be nice to get a grasp of what he, uh, being critical. And next, for skills, um, I would say almost at every point you reminded, I think what has given most of us an edge here is the fact that um, we have a marketing background, digital marketing, um, you know, that, uh, in, that involves social media. So yes, that's the basics. You have to have a knowledge of social media. We keep up with um, of the trends, 
go online and make yourself familiar with social media trends and digital marketing, digital communication trends, you understand? Just in class, that helps because virtually everything that we talk about or we've done so far has to do, even assignments has to do with you thinking outside the box, you bringing a, a scenario because you, there's this tendency to get extra marks or, um, you know, um, be listened to in class because you're bringing your need, your your unique experience from your country to the table while discussing in class. So, you know, and even very recently, which was yesterday, yeah, our lecturer asked, I would really be open, in his words, I'd be open to contributions um, from your country because I'm not about just talking about the European perspective today. I want to hear from you people, every one of you. And I talked about my country. So it's not just you know, being, I mean, I trust that if you are interested in DC to begin with, that's to say that um, you would be, you would keep up with trends and um, news in your individual country. So that's very, really important. So to pack it, writing skills, marketing skills, and the critical slash analytic, um, um, analytical skills, very important for the polling track. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I go on answering the question. Huh? Uh, oh, this is a long question. Mm. Uh, um, I'm going to answer the questions about the motivational letter uh, in a more uh, um, sort of um, general way, you know, just specifically uh, to the question from. Anastasia. Fireworks here. <laughs> um, the motivational letter is a fundamental uh, element of your application. Ah, okay. It's a, it's a fundamental uh, part of the application. And uh, um, we give some uh, basic ideas of what should be in, in included in the motivational letter. And we do not go into the more specific because um, this is an element that the selection committee, the members of the selection committee use to make a difference between um, candidates to a large extent. Um, we have uh, many, many very qualified candidates. And so when they, most of them have the same diplomas or, uh, you know, the same number of years of experience or, uh, you know, similar profiles, um, they members of the selection committee have to decide what is the potential uh, for uh, uh, you know, uh, participation and development of the individual, mainly from the motivational letter. So I, uh, we, uh, on purpose, we do not give um, precise uh, information of what you should put on the motivational letter because it's your decision uh, and it's your uh, creativity behind it and your uh, personal motivation and uh, and also the choice that you have to make in, into fitting what you think is going to be the relevant information into the uh, into the, the number of the limit the limits and in words so uh, whatever I think could make a good motivational letter actually might not be uh, in your interest because uh, somebody else maybe is going to read it for sure because I'm not a, a, one of the reviewers um, and so uh, it, it would not be a good advice um, so explain why you want to be in this program and how you're going to think uh, you think you're going to benefiting from this program in the motivational letter full stop um, thank you for the for this contribution about the motivation letter. We have a question from Carmen actually. So uh, I've read this question several times about uh, people who study business management. Are they allowed to apply to for Techman? They, are they should they have the background technical background for that? So she, she uh, yes. Yeah, now before I I pass this question to Sharon, I'm gonna give a more practical uh, uh, view on this. Um, so there are two elements, there's a business background or a technical background. As I understand, particularly after uh, the first intake, the curriculum uh, on that part was changed and it's more related to the social science. 
And so uh, particular technical skills are not really relevant, but maybe Sharona can tell me, uh, you know, um, after attending these courses, uh, you know, what's her experience? Uh, yeah. So do you have a technical background? Uh, or uh, do you think you need Correct. a technical background? So I actually do have a technical background as I have a master in computer science already. Uh, despite that, I still think that you don't need it because we weren't programming ourselves during the courses. The, the most technical thing that we got in that sense is that we got code and we had to understand what was going on. So I would say definitely give it a try um, and apply. And I definitely think you can go through. Still, it's always nice to have some basic skills in programming also just to increase your chances on the job market. So it's not officially necessary, but of course it's still recommended. Also, because there's a lot of freedom in terms of projects you're doing. And I do think that if you want to go to this technical direction, it's of course also nice if you can add something technical in your projects and that they're not only business uh, related, um, but it is possible. Yeah, actually, you know, in my experience and by talking to the students and maybe also Reza and again, Sharona can uh, uh, contribute to this, um, particularly the people that have a, back, a technical background, they, they also had a technical job yeah, uh, before. Uh, uh, and so you want to upgrade your uh, skill set, uh, you know, and going from a technical position to a, a larger vision yeah. of things, uh, maybe uh, in technical managerial position, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, um, so somebody who in the future is going to be able to understand the work of technical people, but also have a, a, a larger view a of things and, yeah. and think yeah. think more in perspective. Yeah. And, and give a different contribution. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of agree with uh, Sharona and what Sergio just said. I mean, you could, most of the people that are in TechMan do come from technical backgrounds or either have been uh, in technical jobs. But I personally see that if you're at least very enthusiastic about the current developments of technology, if you're tech savvy, tech savvy enough and you're like, really aware of what's going on in the technology world, I think that's, that's going to be, uh, I, I would say it's going to be enough because we are, our program so far, at least from my experience and from what Sharona said, it's not focused on the technical aspects, but, but how the technical aspects all, also relates to the other aspects of the program, which, is, which could be the business side, which could be the political side or which could be the social science side or the communication side so um yeah you could you could give it a shot i mean i you should <laughs> i think yeah. in the past there were um students oh. the business background oh, so, yeah. your, your... yeah i'm not sure oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah, yeah I'd, I'd also like uh, this one is uh, because also I'm a tech man from the tech man. He's a bowling place. Okay. So this one actually is more about uh, it is take more about a scientific approach. So it's teach you to how to research better, how to do much better researches, how to do it, how to be a scientist actually. So if you're thinking about pursuing PhD after this lead, of course, like this lead will prepare you. To the next big move, very much, very good. The professors here are so capable and so eligible. They give you the right uh, techniques for the re for going. And if you want to the scientific uh, track, or even if you want to go to the uh, uh, job market, also you give you have the practical uh, experience as well. So uh, I totally agree with what the other guys. Um, I don't know if you microphone and mute. Uh, Sharona can give some ideas of uh, maybe you know of uh, jobs that um, the students in your take are doing part-time or study for example or uh, you know what kind of jobs they have right now or uh, what they're interested in. So you mean for student jobs next to the degree in Copenhagen? Yeah, I mean, what, what kind of jobs people in, in the Techman track do 
during or straight after the studies. And of course, um, now we have alumni who have graduated a year ago, so they're not, uh, you can't say, you know, what's going to be their career in 10 years. Yeah. Uh, but maybe, you know, your knowledge about jobs, uh, student jobs during or straight after, because maybe you're, you're in contact also with the students. Yeah, so I noticed that a lot of people um, uh, ended up in like an IT consulting position, so a bit like in between the business and the technical side, um, also in terms of student jobs, I noticed that a lot of people, uh, it was definitely easier for people with a technical background and people that are able to program to find a job, so that's definitely the case. Um, but uh, but if you don't like there's still a lot of possibilities for jobs um but personally i'm working as uh, in the field of data science and analytics um but it's also at an it consulting firm so i'm a bit more technical there but as well a lot of client contact uh, uh too so there there are really a lot of possibilities and i think the nice part of working in copenhagen is that you don't need to speak danish or at least there are so many companies uh, that are able, that are willing to hire people, especially in this technical field, uh, even if you just speak English. Okay, um, can I take a, uh, a questions from here uh, that I want to turn to uh, again, Olinka and Sharona. Um, there are questions about data science. Um, do you know of any courses uh, related to data science? I, I know the uh, these type of courses are available at AUB and uh, at AU, but uh, I, on top of my head, obviously, I don't remember the titles. Maybe you do know or you attended it yourself. Yes, I know that we um, are going to have a new course, so that's good for um, the upcoming intakes, and that's a course in machine learning. So I was the last year in the previous semester that was doing a course, and it only had like two uh, weeks of machine learning as part of the semester course, but next year, it, uh, from next year onwards, it will be completely a machine learning course. Um, there um, used to be another course, but uh, we are not allowed to pick that anymore. So it's pretty much just one machine learning course. Um, I didn't have that choice. I am interested in data science. I do have some skills in that field, luckily already. So I just decided to focus in my master thesis on machine learning and comparing different neural networks. So even, uh, even there, there are possibilities to combine machine learning in uh, semester projects and thesis and maybe even in projects of courses so for the semester project of this semester I'm working together with another student and he's interested in data science too so we try to um, uh, fit the requirements of the course and also combine our interest in machine learning algorithms um, so there is this possibility but it's definitely not a data science master no um, but um also, particularly in Brussels, uh, you have access to uh, um, elective courses. And so I think machine learning in that case, uh, Sharon, I was moved to another semester when you don't have uh, uh, the elective courses. And this is why probably you couldn't attend. But um, think on any data courses, or uh, the software, or uh, I don't know if this is an interest of yours. Okay, so this semester we do a course called Digital, Digital Methods and Innovation. So basically, um, it, ha it, it has to do with data sets, you know, how you can be um, a better, you know, how you can do your projects better. So we look, it's divided into two aspects, the methodological perspective, the, that's the theoretical part, and the, the, the practical part where in each class you look at different tools that you can use for your, methodology, your, for your methodology when it comes to writing thesis. So I find the class really, really interesting because um, it, it's um, quite different from every other um, course that we've taken so far because most of them have been really abstract, but this is, um, you know, practical. It, it, it really, really connects to the real world for me, based on my background as a digital media um, expert, basically. So, yeah, I think it's a cost, it's a cost to look forward to. 
Okay, I think we, we missed the last part. The, voice, the sound yeah, was not clear. The sound was not clear at the end, at the last Only sentence. the last five words. Okay. <laughs> Digital methods. <laughs> Okay, no, I just maybe we missed the last few words, but um, we made it clear that there was already a, a course that has to do with uh, um, data uh, also con uh, connecting to uh, your master thesis. But um, again, there are also uh, eligible uh, uh, elective courses, and uh, I'm sure there are a number of courses that are even more specific on, on data science related to data science uh, that um, students can choose yes, from. I'm quite sure they are. I'm not, I mean, I wouldn't be able to give you the name, the title of the course now, but I mean, you can go outside the faculty and actually take an elective. So for sure, you can cross the data science part and actually, I mean, if, you, if you're if up for the challenge, go for it. So yeah. That's and actually, actually well. available for elective courses, not only you can go outside of the faculty, but you can also go outside of the university. Um, and choose uh, also courses in another universities if you want to, and, and if the local administrators agree that this is suitable um, as part of to be considered as part of the program. Okay. Uh, actually, I would like to shift the discussion to the ICT for D track because we're receiving a lot of uh, questions about this track, and unfortunately, we don't have any experiences experiences yet no. in this track. It's totally new one. So uh, usually the questions rel related to the ICT forty will be like, what will be the background of the applica applicant? Like, uh, for example, in the chat, we have uh, Aslihan asking what skills and strengths should be processed, processed or keep in mind for pursuing ICT forty. So, uh, um, of course, I think uh, again we don't have uh, uh, concrete experiences. Uh, we have never sat down. With the selection committee to uh, select students for this track yet. So uh, um, when it comes to answering questions about Techman and Pauline, of course, I I, uh, I was part of the process. I didn't select the students, but I was part of the process already three times, uh, and so I know how uh, more or less what priorities or not are are, uh, are considered in selecting students. So I don't know uh, what priorities. Uh, again, are going to be uh, in, in concerning the ICT for these students, but surely uh, being able to demonstrate already an involvement uh, in non-profit organizations or uh, and working in, in in the sphere of development with the different aspects, whether it's uh, you know social uh, uh, education or. Uh, or uh, information technologies, or sort of economic, or uh, inclusion, or uh, dealing with inequalities, etc. It's certainly going to be a, a, a major asset because, uh, particularly back Henningen, it's focused on on a lot of uh, practical element. People do uh, programs, they assess programs as well, so they also go in the field. Uh, and so surely this is going to be uh, an asset. So uh, uh, certainly a motivation to pursue the career and being able also to demonstrate uh, that you know uh, uh, students were already involved in, 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 with these types of issues. Because let's not forget this is not an introduction to the to the question, uh, but it's a specialization as a master program. Uh, and so uh, uh, you know. Um, Sort of being, having been involved uh, in, in development practices. And so the skills and the, and the strength that are required to work and in the situation. And probably this is the only track that uh, you put a limitation for our criteria for the GPA, which yes. should be like at least 70% of the total GPA. Yeah, and obviously because this is like uh, a quite intense uh, track that will be, as you said, um, uh, so involved in the research uh, and, and the, 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 the practice and the practice and the practice, of course. Uh, so there's a question 
Yeah, the question about uh, if, if, if student having a master degree, can he also apply to the this leading program? Of course. Um, uh, we uh, balance a little bit. Um, so um, uh, somehow um, we realized in the last few years that uh, students who do not have a master degree already um, could profit more from the experience. So I would say for the last intake, probably a larger percentage of students do not have a master degree already. Uh, but there are some, some, we also select some students that do have a master degree to a, a, a smaller group. Yeah. Uh, smaller proportion. This is for uh, the scholarships. Yeah, there are some. Um, yeah, yeah, there are some who have already a master degree. Yeah. Of course, there has to be a master degree um, where we see that uh, you know the um, um, this elite becomes complementary. Okay, so somebody with a very similar master degree probably is not going to be accepted. Somebody with a master's degree that could be complemented mm -hmm. by an yeah. education in, uh, yeah. in uh, digital communication leadership, then of course uh, is considered. Yeah, yeah and complementary actually is a keyword here because also uh, through the question there was somebody talking about shifting the, the department, so moving from a department to a different department, total department. So it's as you said, it's complementary, so it's not a shift to a different uh, specialization. But it's more it's about a more a contribution and added value to the uh, masters that you already had, or even to the bachelor, because in order to be eligible to apply to one of the tracks, your department, your bachelor uh, degree should be somehow connected to the communication. Yeah, of course, it's a specialization. But um, we have this we have this uh, situations, and and now I don't remember which students, but maybe that they had a bachelor in communications and then a master in something else. And so they are eligible, and, and, and that master is different from, uh, you know, this elite, so they are considered. So this, do you uh, uh, advise them to add also the master, although it's not related uh, to the... Yeah, of course, add, the, add to application every, every experience. Uh, uh, I mean, you can't do differently, you have to uh, provide a curriculum, so uh, you have to explain what you did in the last few years, and if you did a master, uh, you can't just uh, leave that out. Uh, yeah. And uh, if, if, if course, it, if, if this is a chance. Yeah. yeah, so this was actually the case for me as I already have a master in data science and then decided to do this. So, in my motivation letter, I described how I taught that uh, DC Lee can be of added value to my master in data science. And then during the interview, I actually got a lot of questions. Uh, because it is a bit weird as data science is way more specific than DC lead. So it's kind of weird to go from specific to broader, at least to some people it could be weird. Um, but uh, that's why I also got a lot of questions already about indeed my master thesis and how I would see uh, to combine those things. So really think about the added value indeed and describe that clearly um, and then good luck. Um, but Sharon, I think at this stage you realize how the, your two different qualifications are complementary. You know? So uh, um, you're not doing the same master again. Uh, it's a social science master. You've done a technical master, and, and probably um, it was recognized uh, in during the selection, and, and it was uh, rightly predicted that you know you would benefit from uh, these two different uh, educations together. Uh, so, Good point, thank you. Yeah, uh, actually, I would like to, uh, Oyanka, to talk about, about the student jobs in Brussels, because we already talked about the uh, student jobs in Copenhagen. So what do you think, Oyanka? Yeah, okay, so um, first things first, one thing I looked out for before coming here was, what kind of jobs do people do when they're abroad as students? And I saw teaching English, do you understand? And um, when I came to Brussels, that was that was the first thing I went I went for because I don't believe in being idle, and I submitted applications um, in different places, and um, I started with volunteering like as a teacher before I even got before it got to the point of being paid. It was like something I had to show that I was capable of. So typically here, 
it's uh, because of our track and um, the backgrounds, which has to do with, you know, social media communication, the marketing industry. So yes, jobs here, you have to uh, available as in most people in my class, I will take it from there, are communications interns, marketing assistants, and um, uh, um, sales, sales personnel, do you understand? So you, need to look at focus on the, the skills you have basically and just send out your CVs to different places and please don't restrict yourself. I would never have thought that I would teach English one day really but I find myself doing it. So um but that's for the time as a student. But after there are jobs you can look at working with the European Union, you can look at the the good thing about Brussels is there are a lot of international firms, international organizations, which puts you at, at, at a, like a greater advantage if you haven't learned the language or familiarize yourself with Dutch or French while you are here, which is something I think is really key that you should work to. I mean, I know there's a lot to do, but at the end of the day, if you can balance it, if you can learn the language and decide and show that you have basics, um, that would actually um, foster the rate at which you get jobs. Because if you, right now, I think if you just take a look at um, jobs, job applications in um, in Brussels, you would find that every like eighty five percent of them need you to have a, um, a knowledge of Dutch or French, which puts us as um, at a disadvantage, us being in you know, countries and other European countries that don't, you know, that don't have a grasp of the language. So to really, really answer the question, you can, yeah, another thing that I know I've done here is like teaching, which is pretty flexible for me. I like the flexibility of the jobs I have. It, from time to time, I take social media freelance jobs, which is good in the sense that you do not have to, you know, get to the point where you, you you lose focus on the main priority, which is classes. I, I I'm very keen on not tying myself to a job that would you know maybe oh I have to run a three weeks campaign and the lecturer comes to class tomorrow and not and says we have to do a very tasking you know, or challenging assignment. Then you find yourself being like um, a deer caught in the headlights. You don't know what to do. And yeah, you need to focus and uh, prioritize basically so you're not overwhelmed. And I think a network is very important too. Uh, it's important in Copenhagen, but I think it's way more important in Brussels that you really, you need to know the right people. And that's why I strongly recommend everyone that if you go to Copenhagen or if you go to Brussels, go to events, go to an AI festival or like a conference or whatsoever and talk to people. And that will help you a lot, uh, either for a student job, for your job afterwards or your master thesis or anything. So. I agree. So yeah, to add to that, from time to time, I we I actually go on Google to search for you know social media events, digital events. I mean, there was even a time I won like a coupon code from Snapchat to go to an event. That's because I scout. I just went online to scout, and it's really I mean, inf information is knowledge. We have Google at our disposal. What's happening this weekend in Brussels? Um, what events? What networking is really key because some other I got a reference, um, like a, um, a freelance job from an event I attended, like immediately I landed in Brussels that I looked up for. So I think that's really key. I mean, that she mentioned the eventing, call for events and uh, put yourself out there. That's really key. Yeah. Okay. Can I add uh, something? Uh, actually, it's not a, it's, I didn't to a question. Uh, one of the questions about jobs, somebody, uh, uh, don't find the name. Uh, yeah, the startup. The question of the startup. Somebody asked um, if you can uh, open a startup. Um, obviously, we're not uh, like business consultants in this respect. Um, I, I, I just ask anybody who's here who knows if any other students have a startup. I know of uh, a case. Uh, a former student uh, of the program that graduated this year that kept uh, being a programmer uh, in a previous job and opened a VAT account while he was in Denmark. So I guess this was possible. 
but he didn't do that um, in, in Salzburg because the time was too short and, and uh, the uh, uh, process was quite complicated for the length of time. Um, so I don't know if you, uh, any guys know of anybody else opening a, a company while they study. Actually, uh, Copenhagen is quite famous about its startups. Uh, maybe Sharona ha have already experienced some. Can you talk to us about that, please? Uh, yeah, there are a lot of small companies. It's very easy in Denmark to start up your own company. And I know that like Lynette and Nikechi are trying to uh, start up something, so, uh, which are two uh, of my fellow students. Uh, so there are a lot of opportunities here in that field, definitely. Also for internationals, so that's great. And I guess if you have already the idea, maybe you also through, through networking, maybe you can get something, try to find a sponsor, or maybe try to apply to a conference or hackathon or a kind of sponsorship program. Um, so the university has, yeah. the well, university has some sponsorship uh, options to uh, for this kind of things. The university in Copenhagen. All the university in Copenhagen. Oh, great news! Uh, um, maybe because we we, we uh, almost finish, uh, and there are questions about the uh, um, selection process that I'm going to answer uh, really quickly because you just have to look at the information on the website. Carefully, I guess. Um, critically. And critically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, including the question and answer section. Yeah. Um, so ideally, um, the reference letters should come from work environment and uh, uh, a study environment. If this is not possible, then you should do with um, whatever reference letter you can uh, provide. Obviously, personal life reference letter are not really considered, uh, or friends or, or, or relatives. But um, best case scenario is uh, one from a study environment and one from a work environment. If this is not possible, then you know you do what you can. Whether this has, was going to have a, a negative um, um, negative consequences, I can't say because it depends on the reviewer. Um, but, you know, if you have a, a good explanation for this, probably not. Um, the eternal questions about the English proficiency, um, this is not, uh, we uh, answer uh, 10, 15 questions about the English proficiency a day. Um, and this is not mandatory for the first phase. Um, it's not uh, a, a, it's not penalizing if you don't have one because yeah. it's not mandatory. So I didn't. Of course, we don't. Huh? I didn't submit mine for the first phase. You didn't. I did it. So okay. once I got the scholarship, I took it. I took yeah. it, I, an IELTS test. So I took the English test after I got the yeah and collection. On the other hand, yeah. if people have it and they include it, and this is also maybe a good score. Yeah. Possibly uh, the members of the selection committee that are going to review the yeah. application are going to see this favorably, uh, but it's not mandatory. So you don't have it; um, it's not disqualifying. Yeah. Reza is a, 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 a <laughs> example. <Yeah. laughs> Actually, you have scholarship too. You have also scholarship too. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, do not panic. <laughs> you don't have it. You don't have the, uh, uh, the score now. English score. Do not panic. Just apply. And you can. Yeah, this is not a, uh, it's not a problem. That's true. Sure. Um, so, are there any other questions that maybe um, activities of the final oh. semester are elaborated upon? Uh, internship or thesis? Um, this is the excellent questions that I like to ask uh, our <laughs> guests uh, or the most guests because they've been through the process, although. Um, the final uh, 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 configurations now is decided this month. So uh, also the partners uh, have at least until uh, uh, end of November. We, we try to push them to give us an answer before, but the partners have until end of November to actually uh, give us an official uh, answer. But how did you go uh, about thinking, uh, you know, what you're gonna do in the fourth semester, where you're gonna be, um, what, if you're gonna do a research day, an internship, uh, how did you come to that decision? I would go to UCLA.
Actually, no, I, I would go to Brazil, I think. But I but I'm gonna go to uh, Australia probably this semester, but I'm not, I already finished my studies. Um Sharona. Yes. Um but, well, I knew for sure I wanted to go to a partner university, so I just thought this ex, uh, extra university could be of great addition to my uh, degree. Still, I believe that working together with a company can be of great added value. Well, luckily, I did find a company or actually an organization, the Danish Child Welfare, so I am a little bit doing both, hopefully. Um, so I am working uh, I'm doing actually project for them, so it will help them um, well with with their work. Um, but still, I have the opportunity of just doing that uh, digital, and um, I have some interviews with them, but they're scheduled before going uh, away for three months and afterwards. So I tr I chose to combine both, uh, but there are of course some options provided by DCLE too. Um, they were just not within my field of interest. But if they are within your field of interest, it's of course great, and I would say uh, go for that. But there are so many options, and I would say enjoy and really think, okay, what do you think is going to be the best last semester of your university time? Um, uh, but the nice thing is that you don't have to decide that now, I think, right? Or at least not for us. Uh, we could decide that later. So um, you meet the industry partners in the summer school so you can talk to them see what they are working on and um i that helped me a lot honestly yeah and in fact before passing the the word uh, i should mention that for example this year for the first time we had a new industry partner participating in the summer school and that was the representative of tdc and two of our students now are uh, are going to do an internship at the in their fourth semester. So it's also a matter of opportunities. Yeah, actually, I'm thinking about applying for that. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I come to Rome, I can just apply. Yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting yeah. company. Yeah. Oinka is going to be the first student of ours to go to GTUC. Ooh. Although only for one month, not three months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or uh, I don't know for, the, for what reasons, but how uh, how did you make your choice? I know this is related to your thesis, actually. Okay, so um, I kind of support Sharon's um, um, say that it's really too early. I mean, it's good to plan ahead and actually make plans, but I mean, there's a, a lot is really going to change. I can remember telling um, Joe when he interviewed me. That I was set on doing my internship with Red Bull, but my topic has changed. My interest has changed. I mean, I changed even this. My current interest right now even changed based on the feedback from the last summer, which was just October. So a lot can change in a month. A lot can change in two weeks. So if if you're interested in something, I still advise that you keep an open mind. However and um just keep the options open you know and yeah i'm interested in ghana because um um the, the my my topic relates to cyber crime and um there's this interesting concept of cyber crime that is in ghana called sakawa apologies to Ghanaians. i don't know if that's real pronunciation but yeah i want to explore cyber crime and in, in regards to Twitter phishing, you know, and how um, basically looking at it from how Ghanaians, the government, because there have been talks on how they're going to change, um, put a stop to that, and it is really interesting for me. Yeah. And uh, I believe GTUC is going to give you access to key people to uh, discuss uh, this topic. Uh, with uh, yeah, people in, in, in Ghana that will give you uh, uh, very uh, high quality information. And so this was part of your decision. Yes, um, the, um, that's the beauty of summer school. I mean, I was I was just telling myself, just what if I didn't reach out to or get to talk to Professor Osei, which, is, which was a representative from Ghana. I actually um, got talking to him and he offered to, you know, be, Go an extra step in connecting me with people where I can interview and actually talk to on the current discourse and the, uh, the 
current state of um, cyber crimes in Ghana. So um, while in summer school, your very first summer school, or even a second, put yourself out there, get to talk to people. You never uh, to ever to lecturers and representatives from the industry, um, partner companies or school. You never can tell, um, help you, um, push your interest. You know. Okay, thank you. Um, I think this is a good question because uh, um, personal experiences in this case uh, are, are, uh, are very important. I think uh, there's a couple of questions that are very technical about the, the application process and I, um, you know, I, I don't think these are, are, are interesting for a general audience. Um, if you uh, um, if you feel that you don't find information on the website, please uh, email admin at dc.eu. Within maximum two, three days, we answer uh, all questions. Um, and maybe, I think I read, um, we already answer um, questions about the job and job markets later. So the ones that are maybe asked it, um, ask this question, can um, watch the, this video again when it's gonna be on YouTube. Uh, to uh, listen to that part of the conversation. So I would like uh, for, first to uh, deal with uh, one question and then do a final round uh, with everyone here. Um, the question of digital marketing, um, it just turns out I have shared um, a, uh, two days ago, uh, we were contacted by the High Court in uh, the NAG. They were looking for information and, and, uh, and social network uh, specialists. And they sent us the, 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 the link to the job directly because they read our prospectus. And I forwarded um, this uh, into um, our alumni, alumni chat. Uh, uh, group on LinkedIn. Uh, and so, of course, some of the students and graduates of this elite go on and, and then work um, in the area of marketing and social media. But uh, what you learn at this elite is actually to look at social media critically, um, to look at, uh, you know, the interplay between the use of social media and social groups or society or politics or business. Um, there are no uh, courses that I know, maybe at BUB uh, in some stage, that have to do actually strictly with marketing. So if you have a background, uh, this is something that you have already, and then, you know, within this city, you, you start thinking a bit more broadly about use of social media consequences of use of social media uh, uh, media, etc., and so it's relevant. But and then you can do a thesis that has to do maybe uh, um, with social media. But as Olinka shows, you are a social media uh, specialist, and now you do something on cybersecurity. Okay, so it's something that is quite uh, none of that is not necessary. Very into oh, me. I'm really stepping beyond my you know my regular day-to-day -day activities. It's challenging, yeah, and I'm up for it. So we, 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 we want to uh, open up perspective uh, for our students. So one last round and then we close. Uh, it's already uh, 10 past five here. Um, one last round is one tip you're going to give each to prospective students okay. on, uh, you know, how to make it uh, through the selection process. Uh, very short, please don't go over one minute. Uh, uh, very short, and you can be specific regarding your track. Uh, uh, and so, start with Abdullah, uh, go around, yeah. and, and then we uh, say goodbye. Yeah, for me, actually, it was the, like, uh, I would suggest you work hard on the motivation letter. Motivation letter is a very critical element in the process. So, give it, give it your, your time, okay? I, 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 as I remember, it took me like three days to write my motivation letter because I wrote it, then I edited it, then I sent it to some of my teachers that I trust, they gave me an advice. Uh, I wanted to convince the, the committee with, with, with all my power, with all my passion. Of course, I was honest about it, I didn't write anything, but 
I didn't try anything that was not true. All of this was, was true from my experience. But because you have to imagine that you're competing with a lot of uh, skillful people in this program. So what are the skills and the, the most important uh, points you want to show up in your motivation letter in order to convince the committee that you are the one that you should, that you should be, why should you, you should be selected? What did or one of those few places? Yeah, uh, I mean, Abdallah spent three days. I spent two weeks on my motivation <laughs> letter. So yeah, it's actually important part. Just for and me, if you don't Google, uh, I don't know, exactly. Yeah. That, uh, for person. me, I just I was just writing a story, <laughs> a personal story. So um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, of course, personal story. Yeah, exactly. exactly, because you have to talk about yourself. Exactly, that's yeah. true. Um, but one thing, uh, one tip I would give to prospective students on coming to DC Elite is to come with an open mind because you will have a lot of new perspectives. So, yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Lisa, you, uh, you want to give your tip? Okay, um, just to add to the motivation letter angle, sell yourself. Just imagine you were standing in front of a jury and you had like five minutes to sell yourself. Just imagine you under that, all that, that much pressure. I mean, I'm not saying your, your motivation letter should be filled with so much urgency, but you should think about the littlest things you've done. Don't overlook anything. If you if one day you're working in your village and you saved the life of a child or something, say it or in a very, very um it should have an angle to it, not like you're writing a, a, a story or, or, or a composition or something. But talk, just be free. Talk about sell yourself and tell the story because you, for sure, you would meet a lecturer, a professor who is very big on telling stories and you get to see it. So yeah, tell the story. This is a very good point. Uh, let me remind the. Uh, uh, the listeners, the viewers, that you know. Uh, uh, there are, there, are, there are no metrics to judge the uh, motivational letter. And so, uh, you know, for example, telling your story, uh, and then it, it might actually be a strategy to uh, come out from uh, your, the, uh, the regular motivational letters. Put, put, put yourself into the shoes of the uh, selectors. They, they read, you know, a couple of hundreds uh, motivational letters. So, uh, so being original uh, certainly is something that could act in your favor. It definitely did, uh, yeah, uh, for uh, the current candidates. Sharona, your turn, and we finished with you. Yeah, Ray says that, that you have to be open, and I definitely agree. But I also think you need to know what you want to get out of DC Elite. And I think it's important for you to know that when you're applying. But I also think it's very important that you know that once you're accepted and during the entire program. Because I remember that once I was accepted, I thought, that's fine, I will just start. Uh, the, the master and then I will see what I want to do, which is really not recommended. I think it's very important that before, once you're accepted, keep thinking about what are your interests, which direction do you want to go to. There is so much freedom in terms of like in these semester projects or writing you know, papers or whatsoever. And I think it's important that you know what you want, what you want to learn and what you want to get out of it. So I think it's good if you can state that in your motivational letter already, but also just to know it for yourself. Um, Actually, I would like to emphasize this point because it's very important. Like in our classes, the professors teach us the strategies, but usually the topics, they are selected by, by us, by the students. By our own we, yeah, we, we need our, we choose our interest, our point of research, topic of research. So it's actually important to have an idea what you want to continue. Uh, and after this lead, because your research, your work will be based on that and will, of course, help you in what is after easily. So um, we came we uh, to the end of our session today. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sharona and uh, Oyank Oyenka, for joining us in this session and giving contributing with your experiences. Riza, student representative from Indonesia, thank, thank you very you. much. Professor Sergio, the coordinator, and me, Abdullah, from Lebanon. It was great to explain about this lead to you guys. We wish you the best of luck. And the lead is going to be online. Also, if you missed uh, the beginning or the end. <laughs>
so it's going to be on our YouTube channel and link to our website and, and media channel. Of course, and don't forget to follow the social media pages of this lead. We publish frequently uh, things related to this, this lead and to the students of this lead. We share some of the live uh, experiences That's that uh, we're having here. So yeah, uh, like the page, subscribe to the channel, and uh, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. Bye. Uh, bye bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.